I'm a big proponent of owning your own home. And a few months ago, I did a video about buying a house in Portugal. And I want to give you an update on where I stand with that. This is Ted and Valley of the Dolly. So a few months ago, I did a video and I was talking about whether or not I decided to buy a house in Portugal. And at that point, my decision was no. And if any of you are out there looking for a home in Portugal, I'd be really interested to hear your feedback and what you found, if you decided to buy or if you decided to rent. I want to give you an understanding of why at this point, I think in 2023, I will continue to rent and not look at purchasing. So one of the, if you look at the Portuguese market, almost 74% of Portuguese own their own home and 40% of them have a mortgage on that property. And almost 93%, almost 100% of these loans are all adjustable rate mortgages, which means now that the European Central Bank has already raised interest rates by 2% and will continue to raise it again, um, probably in December and then again in 2023, those mortgages are going to become increasingly more expensive. They're already saying at this point that uh, people with a six month uh, adjustable, that adjust after six months are seeing, and 12 months are seeing anywhere between 12 and 20% changes in their monthly payments, meaning they're paying considerably more. And that's not going to go down, it's just going to go up, which means if you currently have a mortgage, it's difficult to maintain that because you're going to be continuing to pay more which means some people may decide to put their homes up on the market, which means more availability, which leads into a question that a lot of people have been wondering about the Portuguese housing market. Are there units available for sale? Because when you look at the Portuguese housing market, a lot of people will tell you there just are not enough units available for sale. In 2021, there are 165,000 homes or apartments that were sold in that year. What's really interesting about that is you know, that may seem like a lot, but if you look at the number of secondary homes in the Portuguese market, there's 1.1 million second homes in Portugal. And almost 900,000 of those are currently being used as short-term rentals, something like an Airbnb. These units are often inside of really great locations uh, that are popular with tourists or popular with people who want to come and spend the summer. So they may be in the Algarve, they may be in Lisbon, in some of the best locations. They may be in Porto, they may be along the coast. But if you think about that, that's 1.1 million homes or secondary homes and only 165,000 units were sold in 2021. So there are a lot of non-primary residences in Portugal. Additionally, right now they're saying there's somewhere between 700 to 750,000 homes or apartments that are currently unoccupied in Portugal. I have a suspicion that there are quite a few of these that may need uh, significant repairs, which is probably one reason why they're not on the market. Another reason is because renting right now has posed a serious problem. If you look at the units that are up for rent right now, they say one quarter of them have been placed on the market. And one of the reasons owner has cited an issue with the tenant paying the rent. And of that, um, it's over 7% are because they're more than three months behind and over another 7% are because they're over six months behind in the rent. So you understand why if you're a landlord, you may think, you know, I, I fully own this property. I don't have any mortgage on it. I don't have any, it's better to just hold on to it than it is to try to rent it and run into a situation where people are not paying and have to go through that whole process. So you run into that issue which means even the, the units that are coming up for rent right now are showing stress in the market. It's showing that rents are high enough that they're causing people stress and an inability to pay. 
And usually that means that when they move out of these units, they may move in with somebody. They no longer need two units. They've now combined down into a single unit. They've gotten a roommate, they moved home. There are a lot of different solutions that people find when rent gets too expensive. So you're in a market where you have 165,000 houses sold in 2021. You have 1.1 million short-term, well, 1.1 million secondary homes, vacation homes, et cetera. And of that 1.1 million, almost 900,000 are short-term rentals. And then you have over 700,000 homes or apartments that are currently unoccupied. And you realize that 700,000 and that 1.1 million non-primary residences, short-term rentals, is a lot more than the units that are being sold at any given year. So is there a shortage? Maybe, because there are fewer units for sale right now than maybe some demand, which is why you haven't seen um, prices in Portugal decline. But if you look at the European Central Bank, if you look at this um, example from Bloomberg, which I showed you, you know, a number of months ago, it shows Portugal is one of the frothiest economies, the bubbliest home markets, because it is at the top of the scale for affordability, meaning people are already paying as much as they can pay in that market to buy or to rent. And that's the highest in Europe. Why would I want to buy right now? Now, this may be different for you if you're looking at buying a house, your horizon for how long you want to hold the property, whether or not you may want to sell it may be completely different than mine. And I don't suggest you just take my word for whether or not to buy a home. I suggest you continue to do your research and really define what is it that's really important to you. Can you afford to wait and continue to rent? Do you feel that you really need to buy? Those are really questions you have to answer for yourself. But for me, when I look at this, I think it's probably better to rent. Not only that, but currently it's cheaper to rent in Portugal than it is to buy, which may make sense for a number of different markets, but that's something really important to remember because it may be that you know we've looked at the stock market and you can see that it's taken a horrible hit this year, but it's possible that over the next few years, that investing may be a stronger return for your money in the market or in bonds than what you're going to see in the housing market for a year or two. So this whole thing with rent leads into one other question that people always say, which is, well, foreigners will come in and foreigners will pick up the slack and they'll buy all of these units. And yes, there was truth in the 2010s that prices for real estate were partially driven up by foreign investors. So if we look at foreigners buying into the market in Portugal, you'll see in 2017, it was 25% of the market. In 2018, it dropped to 20% of the market. In 2021, it dropped to 10% of the market. And you may be thinking, oh, well, you know, COVID caused a lot of this. Uh, people are now being able to travel. They'll be looking at purchasing homes. Well, according to the Portuguese national statistics, in the first quarter of 2022, only 6.4% of purchases were done by foreigners. So what you see is a dramatic decrease in the number of homes and units being purchased by foreigners in Portugal. Why is that? Well, I think in the 2010s, it was really clear that the Portuguese home market was a great value. And as those values have gone up, you can see in this chart, dramatically faster than the values of properties across the rest of the EU, that people began to question whether or not the Portuguese real estate market was the best place to put your money. So I think that's another thing to consider because that will need to probably realign itself with the European Union housing market as a whole. And if that happens, that means that prices will drop. That would reinforce that idea that there will be a 10 to 20% reduction in the value of uh, Portuguese properties during the 2023 period, something like that. And we know that these tend to run, you know, two, three years. If you look back at the 2011, 2014 period, you notice that the Portuguese housing market cratered and then began to pull back out of it. You'll also notice that the number of homes that were being constructed 
dramatically shrunk right after that collapse in the market. And then right now we're back up at a high point of new construction as people buy and prefer to pick up brand newly constructed units. Uh, so when I look at this market, yes, I had to stop myself and I had to say, maybe 2023 is not the right time for me to buy. So I'll be interested to hear what you, what you think. Do you feel like the market is continue to go up? Do, I, do you think I have it wrong? Do you think the market's gonna continue to go up? Do you feel like the market may just be stagnant? Or do you feel that interest rates, uh, or probably in my personal opinion, are not gonna really drop much? Uh, I don't think negative interest rates are really what the central bank wants in the, in the long term. Again, they wanna keep it at a healthy one, 2%, which means we wouldn't really see a drop in interest. So those payments levels that have increased 10 to 20% are here to stay, if not 30 to 40%. So I'm really interested to hear what you found in the market as well for yourself. And if you see, because we know right now that the German market, the Swedish market, the market in the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the United States have all begun to see drops in pricing drops in the number of units that have sold, more units available on the market. And so it's quite possible we'll see that here in Portugal as well. This is Ted at Valley of the Dolly, and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Bye.